What's going on, guys? It's your boy Woodsy out here, coach of the West Virginia Knockdowns, bringing you my very first draft league match on YouTube. This week, we will be playing the Reunited Kingdom, whose coach is also a guy by the name of the Reunited Kingdom here. And you can see his roster here in the bottom two team slots of Showdown, where uh, I think the big thing that you really want to be focusing on is the big three here. We got Papa Scarm and Mama Chansey here. Uh, they're definitely something that I think I had to prepare my entire team around just because otherwise I would never be able to break the two of those. Uh, outside of the two of them, his team isn't really that stally, but I think he kind of forced me into a corner where I had to run anti-stall anyway because otherwise I'd just get too owed by the two of them alone. And something like Dracovish is, I think, a cool addition to a team which fancy scarm just because it could... Uh, single-handedly beat teams if it has the right matchup. Uh, the rest of his team just has a lot of bulky mons that could also present themselves as threats or even fit the role of being a stalling mon. Like, I think Slowking is something that could potentially be good in stall or even, like, uh, sub leech Seed Whimsicott. But, generally speaking, I think the mons that he was probably going to bring are just this top row here. Um... I thought maybe Ronan Frost instead of Incineroar, actually, because Ronan Frost is a mod that doesn't really have switch-ins, even though, like, on paper, it's probably better than it is in actuality, because it could get worn down by hazards pretty well, and it has to rely on hitting blizzards. So I thought maybe he wouldn't bring it, because I had, like, a couple of okay answers to it. But with that being said, I'll go into my build here. Uh, like I said, going with the anti-stall meta, I'm with my team. The first thing I have is Crobat, who I fully expect is going to be the star of the show. It kind of just runs through his entire team, being able to taunt any recovery that he gets off. Wants to get off with Skarmory and Chansey, and Super Fang is just going to be chipping huge holes in his team. Brave Bird really kind of rips through everything with the exception of Skarmory, uh, which I could beat Skarmory with Super Fang taunt anyway. I have... Roost and Black Sludge just to keep myself healthy and be able to uh, recover off any of the recoil damage I'm going to be taking from Brave Bird. At 167 and Jolly here, we're able to outspeed a Scarf Adam and Dracovish, which is the only thing on my team that could do so, uh, at least in this build. And uh, yeah, like I said, the this is probably going to be the star of the show. But going to the next mod, we have a Haxorus with Swords Dance Adamant. Um, I didn't really know what item to throw on this thing. I thought about maybe running a Lumberry so I don't get D-Waved by Chansey or something of the sort, but I didn't... I thought maybe running Leftovers could be nice just because all of my mons are something that I want to... Like, I know that this game is going to be long and drawn out, so I want to keep all of my mons healthy. I don't want to, like, make a stupid play and let my Haxers pretty much die because I, I tried bringing it in on a, uh, on a prediction or something like that, and I didn't really do this intentionally i realized after i was already done building but my entire team is running leftovers this week just because of the same reason that i was explaining except for crobat who just has the other leftovers but adamant haxorus really outspeeds everything that i wanted to outspeed um i don't really expect that he's going to be running anything other than choice scarf dracovish so i am just outspeeding band and Dragon Claw pretty much hits his entire team with the exception of, like, I want to say, I think it's just Skarmory and Whimsicott, which a plus two close combat is going to two shot Skarmory, whereas Skarmory can't really do that much in return, and Poison Jab is just there on the off chance that he wants to hard bring in Whimsicott on this thing. Uh, this isn't something that I really plan on sweeping with or anything. It's really more of a breaker. I don't really have a sweeper this week going into a stall match, but, uh,. This is something that probably could in a certain situation. Uh, after that, we have regular Rotom here, which really the only reason this thing is even here is to click one move, and that is Defog. Because uh, he can hazard stack on my team with something like Skarmory, and he has webs with Aria Dose, and uh, more rockers with like Santa Conda and stuff. So this is really meant to just like hard come in on those and defog and really make sure that he doesn't have hazards up at any point in the game. Uh, it's something that outside of that, it can maybe be a little annoying just pivoting it around with Vault Switch. Uh, his only Vault Switch immunity is Santa Conda, which is something that I could annoy with Toxic plus Hex anyway. So. It's something that I think could just be annoying for his team, but I don't really expect it to be all that big of an importance this week. 
Uh, Tapu Bulu, on the other hand, is a very important because it is my consistent Drake with his answer. It is Fizz Death with Play Rough, which can hit his, pretty much his entire team with the exception of Skarmory, which is why I have Leech Seed because I'm never going to be able to touch Skarmory anyway, so Leech Seed is just a nice middle ground to hit against pretty much his entire team as well. Uh, this Mon pretty much eats any hit it wants to from Dracovish. It'll hard... If it's a Scarf Dracovish, it'll pretty much eat everything for, like, without even having to worry about it, unless it gets hacked down with, like, Iron Head flinches, which he would have to get a few in a row even, or maybe get frozen by an Ice Fang. But, uh, and it, if he's Choice Banned, Choice Banded Dracovish is so strong, it actually even has a chance to two-shot fully physically defensive Bulu with Leftovers and Grassy Terrain, which is the reason that I'm running Protect here, because, uh... If I get two turns of recovery, then I, I do actually guarantee live two hits, but Dracovish is a scary mod, man. Um, that's why I gotta bring an entire mod just to be able to deal with it. Uh, next up, we have Heatran, which is kind of like my budget Crobat set, where it's it's actually very good at breaking through stall on its own with uh, being able to trap stuff with Magma Storm, and then just toxic them down and taunt them, not allowing them to get recovery. Uh, this thing is really specifically meant to kill Chansey. Because uh, I expect that he will probably switch Chansey in on Heatran at some point, and I can maybe get a Magma Storm off and Toxic it down. Uh, it's a especially defensive set, because I don't really think that I need to run attack if I'm going to be Toxic and Magma Storm stalling everything anyway. And this way it'll be able to hit stuff from some things that threaten my team, like Dragology, and uh, get he hits from Whimsicott, Slow King, depending on what move it goes for, uh, Rotom Frost is it's good for, and so on. And my last Mon is Swampert, which is really just going to be a utility Mon that I don't really see being on the field all that often. It's just a nice pivot into something like an Incineroar or a Sandaconda, where I could maybe get up rocks, maybe Toxic some stuff and be annoying. But I feel like every time this thing comes on the field, it Skarmory just comes in and uh, negates anything that Swampert wants to do. So I don't really think this thing is going to be on the field all that often, but... It's a nice thing to just bring for, I think, in Center or specifically, being able to come in on that and not have to worry too much. So with that, we'll get into the battle here. Um, fair warning, this does get repetitive at a point, but I'll just kind of let you get an idea for the patterns that we go through in the beginning, and then I will speed through everything. Um, I figured I would just leave Crow back because it's my biggest threat to him, and it outspeeds his entire team. Uh, that being said, maybe I should have figured that he would lead one of his bigger threats being Dragology or Dracovish, which do beat my Crobat. Um, so he does lead Dragology, which is something that I don't really have uh, a guaranteed switch into, but I do have good answers to. I figured he would go for Draco Meteor here because it has a chance to Oko Crobat. And I go into Heatran. He's scared out by the potential Earth Power, so I take the opportunity to Toxic because I figured... He I was pretty confident he wasn't going to stay in, and even if he went Skarmory, then who cares? So I figured it was a free Toxic there, and I get a Toxic off on his Slow King, which is something that I actually think could have been a threat this week. Uh, he teleports out as I protect just the Scout, and he gets in the big boy here, uh, but I do have the answer to it, and I find out that he is Scarf by based on the damage, so that's re kind of relieving. I figured he would be Scarf just because my entire team pretty much outspeeds him, but... Him being Scarf means that Bulu could pretty much just check this thing all game. Uh, he does just go Skarmory, which is pretty predictable. I just Leech Seeded so I could get back up to full. I go into my Rotom to kind of scout out what kind of set this is if it wants to be a Hazard Setter as he makes a good double into Trigalogy. Uh, I make a middle ground play into Swampert knowing that he's probably going to click Scald or Focus Blast or something like that because he's going to think that I'm going to go Heatran. And I take the opportunity to get up his Rocks which he is just going to defog away immediately. But that gives me, being able to force him to defog lets me get in Crobat for free and start doing some damage here. As I uh, take his Skarmory down to less than half, which is, Skarmory is like the, probably the biggest defense of all that I'm worried about breaking through this game, so that's nice. Uh, I thought just to make sure that he's not going to get healthy again, but he does predict that and go into his, his threat, Tragology. Um, I go Swamper thinking that he's going to think I'm going to go Heatran. But he does get a nice Draco off. I am able to hit two, so I uh, be able to eat two Drake or yeah Draco meteors with Swampert. So I figured that he was probably going to switch out, because especially because I outspeed him and just Oko him anyway. 
and I go into my Heatran on the Skarmory, figuring that was pretty obvious. And he does go Chansey, like I said he was going to do in Team Bro Builder at some point, and I trap it with Magma Storm, and I do exactly what I say I'm going to do. Uh, he reveals the BT Wave. Maybe I should have taunted before I toxic it, just so he couldn't T Wave me or anything like that. But I wanted to start getting the toxic chip off immediately. Uh, I don't think my Heatran being paralyzed is the end of the world anyway. So from here, I just kind of stall out his Chansey here until my Magma Storm runs out. But I, at this point, I already get him down to seven percent. So I'm pretty content with him just getting switching out because I don't think this thing's ever going to get an opportunity to be healthy again. So Chansey's as good as dead. Um, he goes hard heat or Dracovish on a turn that I clicked Magma Storm but get full paired. It would have been maybe nice to get the chip, but it probably was just going to get healthy again from Grassy Surge anyway. Uh, again, he just gets Skarmory on my Bulu, but it lets me get in my Crobat, and I'm going to start doing damage once again. I get the Super Fang, his Slow King, which is uh, another Mon that I'm kind of worried about getting damage on, so that's nice. Uh, I don't have a great switch in, so I just go into Rotom, because I don't really care that much about Rotom, as he happens to go Skarmory, which is nice, because I could just fall switch out again and get in my Crobat once again. Uh, I get a big Brave Bird off, I think, here. Yeah, big Brave Bird off on Slow King, and I get a crit, which I don't really think mattered, because I think after the Toxic Chip, I was going to two-shot it with Brave Bird anyway, and we get our first kill here. So we're making good progress here. Uh, he's not really doing a whole lot to my team that I'm scared of while I'm chipping down his team pretty well. But things are going well here. Uh, he gets the crit on my Bulu with his Dracovish, which is something that I'm not, I, I even can live two critical hits from Dracovish, so I'm not that worried. He goes Whimsicott to make sure that I can't leech the Skarmory. And I'm not really that scared of that because Whimsicott can't really do anything to my Bulu anyway, so I just play rough as he does go into his Skarmory after, but I'm just getting good recovery throughout all of this, so I'm not that worried about it. I uh, get in my Rotom here because I still don't know what his fourth move on Skarmory is, so I'm still scared of him being able to get up hazards and get my team down because I don't have any boots or anything like that. But he does just go into his fish again and just keeps clicking fishes for end. It's pretty clear that he wants to chip my team down with the fish, like maybe trying to get some hacks on my Bulu. Because once he does get through my Bulu, Dracovish can win the game. Absolutely. So I understand why he wants to keep doing that. Um, as he goes Dragalge on my Bulu, I get to get some nice Leech Seed chip onto this. Uh, this is really the last thing that I think I am that scared of on his team. So being able to chip it down is pretty nice. Uh, he gets the full pair again as he gets a free Dracovish switch, which again is kind of whatever because I think he'd probably get uh, that HP back anyway. Um, he clicks Ice Fang again here. I just click Leech Seed like I have been doing the entire time and I get nice and healthy again. I predict he's going to switch so I get another Leech Seed off and just get pretty much back up to full here. Um, just go into my road like I always have been. He clicks Brave Bird. I get a free Vault Switch here. As he goes Whimsicott, so I get to go into my Crobat here and get some easy damage with Brave Bird. Uh, he decides to stay in with Whimsicott. I think at this point in the game, he like maybe started to realize that Whimsicott's not going to really do anything in this matchup. Uh, he switches out here. I just roost to keep my Crobat healthy because this is the best thing I have to get through his team and finally, you know, start getting kills again. Um, as usual, I'm still just going right him on Skarm. As he goes Chansey, which he could have potentially gotten healthy again off of this. This was a good play on him. This was, If at any point in the game he was going to get his Chansey healthy again, it was going to be right here. Because I think Bolt Switch, I had a little bit of special attack investment, which he probably thought I had none at this point. But it was like, even with a little bit of special attack investment, it was only like a... I think it was like a 6.6% .6 min roll, so I don't even know that it could have lived. I think that would probably round up to 7% on the uh, the thing here. But if at any, it was a good play because if at any point he was going to live, it was going to be here. But he does not live. I get the roll, if it even was a roll. And I just go into my Bulu to get my terrain up. Uh, he does get in his Dragology here. I could just go into my Heatran because it's a full HP. And I even eat, now that I know he has Scald instead of Focus Blast, I know that I could pretty much eat these, especially with the Grassy Terrain up. Um, I decided to stay in here and pretty much take the trade here. Uh, taking Dragology along with my HP for Heatran because this is the last thing that I think, like I think if I get past this Dragology, then I, I pretty much have a win in the bag. 
so barring me getting full parrot every turn and everything, I can pretty much just break this thing down after trapping it with Magma Storm, which I do for a couple of turns here, uh, until eventually we get the kill here. And we're up 6-3 to three here, which is a great position. Uh, Skarmory, which is something that I still kind of have trouble breaking through, is still there, but I can just always come in on this Dragovish. I'm definitely not scared of Whimsicott. Uh, I think this is the point where he does finally get the freeze with Ice Fang after this whole game. Um, if that happened earlier in the game, I think this could have gone a lot differently, but because I had such an advantage at this point, I had enough Mons that could live, that were healthy enough, that could live a Fish's Friend and be able to kill in return. So, knowing that he's just going to click Ice Fang again, I get a free switch to E-Tran, which pretty much gets a kill, uh, as he does just sack his Whimsicott here. And he just goes right back into his Drake of Vish to click Fish's Friend. I'm not going to make any kind of crazy plays here. I'm just going to sack my Swamper because it's not something that I need anymore. And I get in my Haxorus because Haxorus will guaranteed live a Fish's Friend and be able to Oko in return. Uh, he does just go into a Skarmory, which is predictable, but I don't want to make, I don't need to make any plays at this point in the game, so I'm just being predictable. Uh, I go into my Crobat to try to break down a Skarmory, as he makes a good play and doubles in the Dragovish, but it doesn't matter, because I do outspeed and take nothing from Fish's, well, I don't want to say nothing, but I take 72 from Fish's friend, so I'm able to live it, because uh, he doesn't get the times to boost, and I do two-shot Dragovish with Brave Bird in return. Uh, that two-shot is a roll, it wasn't a guaranteed two-shot. But because I got a 52 on the first roll, I don't know what the uh, the roll is, but it was like it was a roll in my favor. I want to say it was about a 70% chance to two shot. Uh, so I'm able to just Brave Bird because even the recoil from this isn't going to kill me, and I could just roost right back up on Starmory so I can stay healthy. And at this point, it's pretty much a wrap. Uh, it took me a while, but we did eventually break through the stall. I never really had any scary points in the game other than maybe the freeze on the bull loose. So everything kind of went to plan as I wanted to. Uh, as we're just going to go through here, I'm pretty much just going to keep looking Super Fang Taunt or whatever until this thing dies. Uh, as eventually he does have to kill himself with Brave Bird Recoil here because he is taunted. And I will just outspeed the Dracovish here now and click Brave Bird and it's a wrap. And with that, we are 1-0 and in the QDL. And... Next week, we have a, uh, another stall matchup. Uh, I think next week's stall matchup is actually a little scarier because this one I had a lot of uh, really great breakers, but I think uh, the next stall team is even more stally than this one is, and it's a Trick Room team, which my team is very fast, so we'll see how that matchup goes. Uh, it'll probably be... This was a pretty easy matchup, I thought, because I had great stall breakers specifically for stuff like Storm Chansey. And I had a Draco Vish answer, which is always nice. But we'll see how that goes next week, and I will see you then.